Welcome, I'm Penny Schultz. It's a new day and a new opportunity to share hope with you. Joining us in the studio is evangelist, public speaker, and hope dealer, Justin Farenbrook, and his beautiful wife, Candace. Justin and Candace are founders of Kingdom Fire Ministry, and they want you to know there is hope for your struggles. For 14 years, Justin was addicted to drugs and without hope. But in 2018, God radically and miraculously set him free through a chain of events leading to a powerful encounter with Jesus Christ. Justin has witnessed the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit moving mightily through his surrendered life as he ministers to people who desperately need God's healing hope. Get ready to receive hope and healing today for the struggles in your life. Thank you so much, Candace and Justin, for being here today. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yes, I'm so glad you were able to get in the studio and meet some of the people here at ONTV. They have such a wonderful heart for outreach. Amen. Amen. It was amazing already. It's already been amazing. God's already been moving. So. He sure has. <laughs> we were able to pray with one of the women here today. And yes. I know you see God moving mightily in yes, people's sir. lives. Justin, tell us a little bit about some of the things that God is doing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we see, you know, God doing amazing things. You know, a lot of people say that, that God's dead. He's not around anymore. And he's still moving mightily. You know, we've seen many people come off of drugs. We've seen marriages be restored, bodies being healed. Um, just the miraculous. So we, we continue to see God continue to move. That's so, yeah. so beautiful. And Candace, you have seen your marriage restored. Tell us a little bit about how you and Justin met. Um, we met at Frankenmuth, Michigan at Bavarian Inn Restaurant. Exciting. And what were you doing at that time to be able to meet one another? Um, I was actually serving. So, so how long <coughs> after you met did you marry? Um, it was about a year and a half. About a year and a half, two years. So yeah. you've been married since? 2013. Oh, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. So you were with Justin when he was going through some of the struggles in his own life. I was, yep. I'm glad the two of you have remained strong together in your marriage. Yes. Justin, will you share with everyone how you were able to be set free with this addiction? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and you know, I love, I love to tell people too that my wife had to deal with the worst part of me while I was struggling with addiction. Mm -hmm. And now that I found Christ, she gets to deal with the best part of me now that I'm working on myself in Christ. You know, I'm not saying I'm all the way there yet, but um, yeah. So, you know, what I'd like to share with the viewers is that, you know, not, nobody wakes up and wants to be an addict. You know, when they grow up, nobody says, I want to be an addict when I grow up. And so, you know, that wasn't my first decision. Um, but bad habits lead to addiction. And so bad habits for me started with marijuana. I started smoking marijuana at 15. 16, I started drinking alcohol. 17, I started with um, painkillers. 18, I started you know, doing mushrooms or any other type of drug, cocaine, anything that I could get my hands on. Um, but I really struggled with the painkillers. And you know, I started out with eating one a day, then to two a day, to three a day, to four a day. And over the course of 14 years, I got myself up to eating 10 Vicodins every single day. Wow. And, you know, I was born and raised in the church. And yeah. so I knew about Jesus. I knew about Moses. I knew about the Bibles, you know, and I, I believed in Jesus. I just never was surrendered and never had a relationship <laughs> with him. And so I got, you know, into this cycle of taking the drugs every day. Couldn't get out of it. And, you know, at the end of my rope, you know, my wife was going to leave me. Um, she was just getting fed up with everything that I was going through, sure. spending all of our money. Um, you know, and um, just all our credit cards were maxed out, couldn't pay the bills. Um, one week we had a lot of things happen in my life. After 14 years, you know, I, I was struggling. I was looking for help, you know, and I seen in the Bible, it said, who the sun sets free is free indeed. But I wasn't experiencing that freedom, you know, and so, you know, I really started to dig deeper. And so one week <laughs> I came to the end of myself by my car breaking down, my other car breaking down. All these, all this stuff happened to me in one week. And I found myself in a Bell Tire parking lot in Saginaw, Michigan, when it, I was, I was going to be done. I mean, I was like, my thought came, I was going to commit suicide, I'm oh. going to lose everything. And I got on my knees and I cried out in this parking lot and I said, God, if you really are real and you're the God that you say you are, and you can save me from this mess that I'm in, God, I will live for you for the rest of my life. In that moment in that parking lot, no one was around, no one was watching, but God seen me in that parking lot. And he broke that drug addiction off my life. And I've been going five Praise years God. for free, drug free for five years. Yep. And, uh, you know, God held up his end of the bargain. 
and now I got to hold up my end. Sure. And so that's what I've been doing. I said, God, I'll go where you want me to go, and here we are today with you. Surrendered. <laughs> Fully surrendered. That's amazing. And your marriage restored. Yes. Yep. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad to hear that you have a family. Yes. And you're in ministry together. Yep. It's yeah. pretty amazing how God moves through your life when you surrender your life. People are getting baptized. Yeah. I have seen some pictures and, and <laughs> talked to you and other friends. My friend Jody is telling me some of the miracles that God is performing. But there's this man that was baptized. Can you tell us about his time with the Lord and his baptism, how that came about? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we do a lot of outreach, you know. So once I got mm -hmm. saved, I knew that God said, you need to go. Two things he told me, share the gospel, preach your story. Sure. Or preach my, you know, share my story, preach the gospel. Yeah. And um, so we started to go and do public outreach out in the parks and street evangelism and things like that. And we were in a park. Um, we take over parks in Flint. And uh, we have a tent, bounce houses, free food, free clothing. We give away as much as we oh, can wow. to the community um, and just try to be a light. And so one day at a park, we were there, and we were doing a three-day outreach with our friends at Flint Driven Church, um, an amazing church down there in Flint. And um, we were doing an outreach, and this man comes flying up to me on the third day of our outreach. This yes. man comes up. He's got tears in his eyes, and he yeah. said, I'm struggling with a crack cocaine addiction. Mm -hmm. I need help. And he got on his knees, and he gave it all to Christ, just like I did in that parking yep. lot. He got on his knees right there in the park, gave it all to Jesus, and water baptized, and he came out of that water a brand new creation right. in Christ. His name is Sean, uh, a great friend of mine still today, yes. still plugged into the church, still doing outreach, helping us now win souls. It's amazing the transformation that God can do in somebody's life. So, yeah. Wow. Surrendered. Fully surrendered. surrendered. That's it. Are you seeing the baptisms, too? I absolutely love what's happening in the parks. Yes. Yep. I'm... I'm there normally in the background, but yes, I am there. Yeah, you're the supporter. Yes. You're probably the one that prays all the time, too. I am, yeah, I do pray a lot. Mm -hmm. men, our men need that. Absolutely. They need that prayer covering, for sure. So you've been out the Hope Barn. Tell us a little bit about what God's doing out there. Yeah, so Jackie Stone and Jody Masella, some of my yeah. great friends, um, we met in May at a Flint, uh, we were in Flint, met at, a, met at a tent revival, and just the Lord had connected us together, and they said, hey, we want you to come out and share oh. at the Hope Barn. Um, they said that they're believing God for miracles, signs, and wonders. Yes. And I said, all right, let's go, because that's me. I'm like, let's go. I'm believing God for the miraculous. You know, a lot of people say, you're radical. I say, well, I was radically saved. I was radically right. delivered. I was radically healed. And I know that God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so they invited me to come out at the Hope Barn. And, man, we have seen some amazing things take place out there. People are being healed. Yes. Incredible. Incredible. I heard just so many testimonies. Lyme disease. And then they're bringing more people back that have Lyme disease or experience some illness, and God's doing the same thing for them, healing, setting them free. Yes. That's amazing. Uh, we've seen, I think, over five confirmed cases from a doctor. Wow. I mean, confirmed on um, a doctor's report that they had Lyme disease and now they don't. And so the only thing in between was Christ. Yep. He's our healer. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's Amen. the one that does it. He gets all the glory. Amen. That's right. Oh, man. I'm so glad that Jackie's making a place for people to come and gather. Amen. What a blessing. Okay, yes. so you were just at an event. I think it was uh, mid-March, a weekend event. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I do a lot of events. Yes. <laughs> um, it was a group of speakers. I saw a oh, little bit yes, of... Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think it was March 8th and 9th. Yes, okay, yeah, we did a healing and deliverance conference out right. in Burton, Michigan. Yeah. And, um, you know, the whole purpose of the conference was to raise people's awareness that, you know, we're in a war, and once you're born again, you're not born again into a playground, we're born mm -hmm. again into a battlefield, mm -hmm. wow. and that we have an enemy, an enemy of our souls, whether we know it or not. And so we're just trying to bring awareness to people and help them to understand that we can operate in the power of the Holy Spirit, and we can make a difference here on the earth as God's sons and daughters, representing Him. Set free to Amen. worship him. That's right. Yep. Amen. So um, when you were telling people about healing and deliverance and going back to God's word, what are some of the scriptures that you know God will watch over that word and perform it? Oh, man. Well, that's the one right there. You just named it. God will watch over his word to perform it. Yep. Uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Tell our uh, people. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He uh, yeah. He Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so if Jesus was healing back then, he's still healing now. Mm -hmm. And now he lives where? Within us. Hallelujah. His same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives mm -hmm. within us. That's Romans 8, 11. Um, you know, Mark 16 says, Believers shall go out and they shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. They shall cast out demons in my name. And, you know, so um, John 14, 12, Jesus said, You should do the same works and greater works than Jesus. 
And uh, you know, we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. And so there's a lot of scriptures um, mm -hmm. that the Lord has put on my heart that really, you know, help me to understand that, you know, it's our job and duty to go out and make this earth look like heaven according to Jesus' prayer. I love it. <laughs> Kingdom Fire Ministries, how do yeah. we get in touch with you and Candace and the ministry of Kingdom Fires? Yeah, so um, you can find us on Facebook. We have a website, uh, okay. www.kingdomfire.us. Fire. Yeah, Kingdom okay. Fire. Yeah. Yes. That's the one thing people always remember me for. I, I preach the kingdom and I, I'm on fire for uh -huh. Jesus. And so, yeah. That's awesome. That's so just visit with. your website. And we can support you, come alongside you, find out where you're going to be next. Yeah, absolutely. There's, okay. a, there's a tab there with events, and you can sign up to our event calendar, um, and then you can find out, because, I mean, we're doing stuff almost every weekend, almost every weekend. We're traveling, we're either preaching or doing revivals or yeah. outreaches or evangelism, or wow. yeah, we're just constantly mm -hmm. trying to... Sounds like you need a bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about the bus. Okay. How do you like the bus, babe? What do you think of the bus, Candace? I love the bus. Mm -hmm. It is um, so awesome to see the transformation of the beginning and then now it's amazing what god did that's so awesome process. how'd you get a bus yeah so uh you know it's one of those stories where you know um i was just traveling you know doing outreach mm -hmm. just preaching the gospel you know doing what i can out on the streets and praying for people and um, you know i got connected to a pastor in the sault saint marie oh. and then got connected to another oh. pastor in the thumb who uh yeah. i didn't know this at the time but apparently they were best friends and so I called the pastor in the thumb and got connected to him. And uh, he had a school bus. He had a 2001 Bluebird school bus that was, a, it was a bus. And, uh, you know, he used it for a bus ministry, pick people up, drop them off. And um, he told me the Lord spoke to him and said that we should have the bus. That's so beautiful. So he gave it to us. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. I hear it's like 40 some feet long. Yeah, it's about 45 foot long. Where do you park a bus like that? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget driving home because it was all a shock to us when we got it. And, and we're driving home. He wrote over the title and my wife calls me and says, Justin, what are we going to do with the school bus? It's bigger than our house. Yeah, um, good question, Candace. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we just found a place to park it. I didn't know exactly what we were going to do, but I was always mm -hmm. taught that if you don't hear God tell you what to do, do the last thing he told you to do. Yeah. And so he told me to preach the gospel and win souls, so that's exactly what I did. Yep. And um, we just kept going. And I met a guy, a young man, came to a tent revival that we were doing, mm -hmm. got saved, and God started to speak to him. And mm -hmm. I, he asked me, he said, Justin, I think I heard God. And I said, what did you say? And he said, God told me to help you with your bus, yeah. turn it into a motorhome. Wow. I'm like, God told you that? He's like, yeah, God told me that. I said, okay. And I prayed about it, we prayed about it, and we said, okay, yeah, this sounds like God. And so we started to go to town on that bus. And, That's uh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you got to get to the people. Amen. You need to go where God sends you. What a wonderful pastor in the Sioux to say, hey, I got a bus. I want to give it to you. It's the body of Christ. We yeah. are connected through the blood of Jesus. And when we flow, we do what he wants. We mm -hmm. do what God wants. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us what's happening um, with some of the people who don't yet know Christ and what you're doing to help reach them and let them see the hope that there is through Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good because, I mean, that's the main thing. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that a lot of the times what, what I didn't understand when I was a drug addict, I knew about Jesus. I believed that I was saved on my way to heaven one day. I really believed that. Um, but I wasn't fully surrendered. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who I was in Christ. I didn't know my identity. I didn't know my purpose. I didn't know what I was here on the earth for. And so I think the devil had me so distracted by doing other things that I never truly walked in the calling that God had for me in my life. And I, it wasn't until I fully surrendered my life over to him mm. was when really he started to open my eyes and show me, you know, I, first I said, God, I need to know who I am. Mm. I said, God, I want to know the truth. In that parking lot, I said, God, I want to know the truth to your word. And the first thing he took me to was 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away, all things become new. And I knew, I said, okay, I'm not a drug addict anymore. That's I'm right. not that person anymore. That person is gone. All things become new. And so I had to really train myself to understand who am I now, God? And through the scriptures, through the Bible, God showed me who I was in his image, you know, his son, you know. And um, so, yeah, um, purpose, you know, that's a big deal for people. I ask people, what is your purpose in life? You know, and a lot of the times, most people can't answer that. And I tell them, God has the answer. God knows your calling. It's not a coincidence that you're here in 2024. Right. God put you here for a reason. There's a specific reason that you're here. You know, and so I try to help people to really 
find their purpose in life, you know, and who, know who they are in Christ and, and to get away some of the old and bad habits that could lead to addiction. Maybe there's some people today that are watching this show. Maybe you would just have some bad habits, you know, but, but addiction doesn't start out as just addiction. It starts out as bad habits and bad choices which lead to addiction. And so that's really my whole heart is to show people and to understand that, you know, the devil has traps that he lays for us. Even Christians, there are many great Christians that love Jesus that struggle with addiction. And, you know, really, you know, I wanted to bring awareness to it and then understand, look inward and say, you know, I do need help. And there's help available. If you fully surrender it all to God, he can help you. Amen. Remarkable. And that's the first step is surrender. That's the first step. Doesn't Amen. matter where you are. That's right. In the Bell Tire parking lot, at Kroger, it doesn't <laughs> matter. At right church, here in the studio. At the studio. Mm -hmm. at anywhere. Yep. God is totally available. Come on. Yeah. Thanks, you do street ministry. You take this message out to the street. Can you share some of the things that God's doing through that ministry? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we've seen, and that's the thing is that, you know, we notice that not a lot of the addicts or the people that are down and out, they don't come to church. Sure. And so we bring the church to them. And so mm -hmm. if they're not going to come to us, we need to go to them. And so that's how it all started with me on the side of the road with the sign during COVID that said faith over fear. And we started to get honks and people started to get faith and started to pull in. And we went from one person to 10 people. More people started pulling over. So how can we help? How can we Is get that involved? Is that in Port Huron? We, did them, we do them all over now. Wow. It started in Saginaw. We went from wow. Saginaw to Flint. Yeah. And then from Flint to Port Huron. Now they're happening in Grand Rapids all over the place. Thank you, God. And, you know, the one thing that I will share is that, you know, people kind of, you know, people pray and ask God for a sign. And wouldn't you know that if you're standing on the street corner with a sign that says, That's Jesus loves you, <laughs> I've seen it happen. People pull in. They pull in for prayer. We call it pull over for prayer. Yeah. They'll pull in and they say, yeah. I was just praying to God. They're breaking down crying. I was just praying, asking God for a sign. And here you are on the side of the road with a sign. Remarkable. I need prayer. And Isn't we'll he for. wonderful? He is so good. Wow. <laughs> wow. Saginaw, you were just, I saw um, something online where you guys were just having ministry right there in a big parking lot. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what we do. That's yeah, we, amazing. We try to go, I mean, we go where I believe where Jesus would have went, where people that are addicted, that are down and out, right. the, the lonely, you know, um, you know, if we're not going to reach them, who's going to? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what I said, Lord, send me back. Send me back to the streets. I came out of the streets. He cleaned me up. Now it's time for me to go back in to rescue more people out to give them the same hope that I got because I know there's so many people that struggle with addiction and it's not just substance abuse you know I mean people can struggle with pornography or shopping or social media there's a lot of different things addiction knows no color knows no race knows no age I mean knows no demographics no area it's all over and so I'm just trying to bring awareness to people and then let them know if you are struggling I know the way out. There's hope. Amen. That's it. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. I love that scripture <laughs> in 1 Peter 3.15. Set apart Christ as Lord. Yes. That's what people need to do. And be ready because God's going to ask you to tell others about that hope that's in you. Amen. And you're doing that. You're modeling that. I see the word just pouring out of both of your lives and it's absolutely beautiful. Amen. Imagine Amen. God's delight in all of this. Amen. Yeah. He knew. He knew. He knew you'd come to the end of yourself right there at Bell Tire. He knew you would support Justin through all his struggles mm -hmm. and pray for him. And now people are being set free to worship God. Amen. Yeah, I'm excited wow. for you. I want to help um, <laughs> others learn about your ministry. And I know people are going to be compelled to support this ministry because mm -hmm. there's so much fruit. How do we do that? Yeah, um, so you can go to our website, uh, www.kingdomfire.us forward slash give. Okay. Um, and if you're not in a financial position to give, we always can use the prayers nice. because we are on the front lines. We go out into the streets to the down and outs and praise God. He's always protected us. It's protection, but I do believe it's because of our prayer partners. Yeah. Yes. And so financially, we yes. would use the support as well. But yeah. Yep. Amen. So we got to pray. Yep. yep. Um, <laughs> I'm sitting at home one night. And I knew you were going um, for that deliverance conference. Yeah. And God just put a prayer in my heart for you. And I never met either one of you. Mm -hmm. But I knew I was going to someday. And um, I just started praying. And I just thought, wow, mm -hmm. God. And that's really what it is. When God speaks to our hearts, we need to be obedient. Whether it's giving or going or praying. Whatever God says. Because He does speak to our hearts. Yeah. You know, it's that gentle knowingness in our spirit that we've heard from God. Or a sign on the <laughs> side of the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, is there anything else that you want to share with people before we close? Yeah, um, you know, I would just like to share um, with the people that, 
Um, the most important and best decision you can ever make in your life. If you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, there is no better time than right now. Maybe you're watching this telecast and saying, I struggle with addiction or I struggle with some of these things and I'm in love with Jesus. Well, then that comes down to fully surrendering it all to Christ. You know, and you know, I believe that God can set you completely free over this telecast right now. And really the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he raised him from the dead and that he sent back his Holy Spirit, he can make you a new creation today in your spirit. You can, you can guarantee your, your salvation. You can guarantee your spot in heaven today by making him Lord and Savior of your life. And so I encourage you to do that and help him to ask him. How can I find my purpose? What is my purpose in the body of Christ? What do you have for me to do? And uh, I promise you, it will be the best decision you ever made. And I just encourage you to do that today. Thank you, Justin. Amen. Yeah, so I would like to pray for people. I believe that God is moving right now where they are, at, whether they're in their living room, in their car. Yeah. Um, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about for a time such as this and we come together and we're all connected through Jesus when we accept him as our Lord and Savior and I think the most important thing is for people to realize they just come way they are yes. right straight up the way they are without anything we don't have to bring nothing but ourselves to the Lord we come in our addiction we come in our brokenness whatever it is so I just hope viewers will realize that you don't have to do anything different today to make your life change before you're ready for Jesus. Receive Him now. So if we could pray, just pray that prayer of salvation. Pray that over people. And if you'll join us in that, we would be so grateful. And then let us know. You reach out to Justin and Candace and let them know that you surrendered your life to Christ. We're believing for healing, hope, and salvation. And it's found in no other name other than Jesus. So will you lead us in prayer? Absolutely. All yes. right. Yeah, so, so Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to speak to your people, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that your spirit is not confined to time or space. So if you're watching this now or you're watching it on a later episode, I thank you, Lord, right now that you sent your only begotten Son, that whoever should believe in him should never perish but have everlasting life, Lord, that he took our sin on that cross. He took our sickness. He took our addiction. He took everything on that cross so that we could be set free, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that yes, he went to the grave and he went to hell and he stole the keys from the devil. And Lord, you raised him from the dead on the third day and now he sits at the right hand of God. He is alive. And I thank you, Lord, that he sent back his Holy Spirit to make us new creations. So Lord, I pray, Lord, that this person watching this call, Lord, we just pray together, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you would help us to turn from, come as we are, and then help us to make us these new creations that we can turn from our, our ways and then turn to you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that salvation is found today through believing, Lord, that you are who you say you are, that you sent your only Son and you sent back your Holy Spirit so we could live with you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank amen. you. So will you guys come back again? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely yeah. We need an hour next time. Yeah. <laughs> or two sure. or three. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. What a joy to meet both of you. Amen. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Penny, for having us. It's been a pleasure and our honor. Thank yes. you. So, um, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, folks, that's our first edition of Hope. And I know you've received God's hope today. We look forward to hearing from you. I'm Penny Schultz. Stop back again. Take care now.